Pleasure, Brent. Thank you. Uh, and tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I've been in the arts basically all my life. Uh, I won an art contest when I was in the eighth grade, and that was uh, a, kind of the high point of my grade school experience. High school wasn't much. I was involved in sports, but then when I went to college, I would decided that I was going to get a degree in industrial design, which I did. And I worked in that field for a very short period of time, and I also did illustration at Procter & Gamble, technical illustration. But that just wasn't going to be enough for me, and I decided to head off to New Orleans to become what I thought was a fine artist at that time. And I lived down there for about three and a half years, and I did a lot of painting, I did a lot of outdoor painting, and uh, it was all real good. And I also did other jobs to keep myself gainfully employed and stuff. After that, I moved back here and met my wife, and we got married, and uh, we've been married ever since. Her name is Alice. And then I got a job working at the Contemporary Arts Center as a preparator, and I put, and I did shows from about 71 to, I'm sorry, 79, 1979 to about 1982, 81, something like that. And I met a lot of New York artists. I went to New York a lot, picked up their art, brought it back, installed it, built the pyramids for a lot of the contemporary art. And then I retired from that, and uh, I, I picked up the paintbrush again and started painting. And then I, I took lessons from a, from, a, from a local artist, and he taught me basically how to mix color in oil painting. And so I've been doing that ever since, and I started selling my paintings. They were landscapes, and uh, I painted all kinds of, of outdoor pictures. Uh, I used to go to the Nature Center and paint. I'd paint all around Cincinnati. And then I started teaching at uh, Baker Hunt, and I taught there for 25 years. I taught oil painting, and I taught a lot of, a lot of people. And um, now I'm currently just uh, doing private lessons here in my studio and, and painting. I've been in a number of galleries in Cincinnati. The, the, the high point probably was the Clawson Gallery downtown. That was really good. But currently I'm with Sharon Cook, uh, who's in the Longworth Hall. Okay. And uh, yeah. it goes on and on. So now you, you kind of touched on it, and I see that you've got a huge amount of diversity in your style and pretty much touch on, on almost all aspects of art with, as far as painting. How, how did you come up with your style of art? Well, I, I, like I said, I was, I, 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 I've always painted landscapes. That's always been my forte. I realized very early on I had really no interest in portraiture and, and that sort of painting. And so I pursued the landscape thing, and I've always done that. And, um, I, you know, I can sell paintings. I don't sell tons of paintings. But anyway, um, so I did that. And then about to, to touch on the other style that I'm doing, which I call the Rainbow Dancers, in a number of years ago, my wife was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And this kind of hit us both right between the eyes. And I basically started to throw a, te a tempo tantrum through my artwork. And that's, that's what I call the rainbow dancers. And I didn't really realize what I was doing at the time. I came up with ideas like, well, I'm just using the figure as a motif, like Monet used these landscapes and stuff, or some other thing, or not really a comic book thing. It never occurred to me, or paint them in glass or silver or whatever I could do because I was able to do that. And then, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I began to realize that they were, they were showing movement and motion, beautiful mu movement and motion. And I kind of related that to what Parkinson steals from a person. And, you know, uh, this was my way to fight back against this. And so I didn't do it consciously, which is, which, you know, really kind of, uh, that's the way it happened. And then I just started, you know, changing colors and painting them in silver or gold and, and, and doing paintings like this where, you know, it's just, it's part of that painting is comes from the interior of Versailles with the uh, armalude, <laughs> which is all this decorative stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it's very just elaborate. very fun to do. And I want these paintings to be fun. I want them to tell a joke, sing a song, make a pun, 
whatever. Just yeah. that it's positive, not not negative, which is enjoy life and be willing to make fun of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, don't take yourself too seriously. Absolutely. I get it. I get it. So tell us a little bit about your process. When you go to lay a piece out, I know you do a, did a lot of plein air painting. Um, tell us a little bit about your process. Well, what I do first is I, I generally now, and I always have, really used photography as a tool. It's great because it records what's actually there. Now that doesn't what mean that I'm going to use what's actually there in the painting, but I will use I will use plein air painting too. I will use small paintings, and I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're back there behind me. But they're all over, and they're over there on the wall, uh, and to build a painting out of that. But generally, I use photography, and then I'll make a couple uh, just quick sketches in value, light and dark, with just with a what they call a uh, a carpenter's pencil, and it's really an art pencil, but they call it a carpenter's pencil. So three values: dark medium and the, the value of the paper, whatever the paper is. And if, if that kind looks good, kind of a depth study, if you values, will. light to dark, no color, anything else. Very rough, very rough, very broad brush. And then what I'll do is if I'm happy with that, and I think I can, if the values are in the right place, I will then take that to the canvas and uh, work that out on the, uh, make the drawing on the canvas. I'll draw the figures in. I don't use models for the figures. I, I, I've learned how to draw figures. Um, there's a process and I can put them in so they look like they're alive and they're in motion and I can manipulate that body however I want to. And um, so then I, then I do what's called a value study or a wash, I call it a wash in, which is I use, I take uh, raw umber. After I've got the, the drawing done, Okay, after I have the drawing done, I will ink the drawing with India ink. Okay, so that's, that resists oil paint. So then I'll take a raw umber and linseed oil and make an oil wash. Mix that up. You know, it's not oil, it's not the paint out of the tube. Mix that up and then paint the whole canvas that way. And then work from dark to light, the old Rembrandt way of doing right. it. And uh, bring out the values then. And that gives me a real uh, basis for then the color. And I can also work out the values and and uh, where they were going to be, the big lights and darks, as I like to call them. And um, and then from there, it's a matter of uh, mixing up the oil paint and uh, mixing color and uh, doing the whole thing in the full color and stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of really positive things about it. It's an old. This is an old way of going yeah, about it. Uh, you know, it's a more of a, a traditional or classical way of painting and stuff. Absolutely. But it leads to, for me, it's lead to, it's led to success. Yeah. And it works. And uh, you know, everybody has their own way of going about it. But that's that's my way. Right. Right. So uh, tell us what you touched on it a little bit. I know you're one of the original artists here at the Essex. T tell us a little bit about. Being at the Essex and maybe some of the advantages of being in a studio format with multiple units. Well, I've come to realize that this is basically an artist colony. In an old factory building, if this was 100 years ago, we'd be out Taos, New Mexico, or someplace like that where nobody wanted to be. That's before the ski industry took over. And, you know, the rent's cheap. And, you know, we have here, we have basically we just got hot water in the last year <laughs> so i mean this keeps a lot of people away i mean they don't you know they want the amenities and stuff and i've always talked to people i hear people complaining about it. i said you know the rent the rent here is really cheap and i mean we've got a, a, a good guy for a landlord i mean but i think of it as an artist colony Absolutely. And there's there's other things I could go into about it, but that that's well, spin that's ideas, get, you know. Kind well, of, yeah, I have friends here, and I make yeah. friends, and uh, you know, camaraderie. <laughs> camaraderie, right? Now, I always ask this question: What would you say to aspiring artists, somebody just starting out, maybe hasn't even picked up a brush, but really wants to get into it? What's maybe just a little tip you give? Them? Now, what are you talking? Are you talking about a young person? Or are you yeah, talking about yeah, young, a, old, somebody that's retired and they 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 used to be a I don't know a geologist or something and just want to be more creative and get into painting. What well, would, I've taught a lot of people like that. I I, I can speak more like, mainly to the older people uh, because I've always taught adults basically. Well, and uh, they're usually the ones that uh, are retired from a profession 
profession. They are doctors, lawyers, psychologists, mm -hmm. uh, dentists, um, uh, even pharmacists, uh, lawyers. Uh, I've taught taught a lot of people like that, and um, they have time in their life to do what they deferred to do at the beginning because their dad told them when they announced that they were going to be an artist when they were 14 or 15 and said, sir, listen, son, I think maybe you better get that law degree, you know, first. And so kind I'll, leave that, I'll leave that to the parents. But for the adults, you know, hey, I can teach you a little bit about oil painting, I think. Right on. Right on. I love it. Love it. Stephen, thanks again for taking the time to share with us. I really appreciate it. And thanks for being part of the Essex. I know every, a lot of people are looking up to you as a, an inspiration. Well, thanks, Brent. I appreciate it very much. Thank you.